Van Hammer. Van Hammer. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the same thing again with Major Guns, right? Like he, you know, big guy, he was athletic, uh, but he didn't seem to me to have like a love for the craft work of our business. Like he, he wanted to go out and be the guitar guy and, you know, just, you know, shake his hair and, and, and do that stuff and be the rock star. And I guess there's some place in between these two that, that, that finds that, but I never saw him as being somebody that was devoted to, to learning the craft. And, you know, but obviously he get on that camera and, and, you know, because of his look and everything and his size, you know, he was, he had a magnetism to him. And to me, I, I, I come from the school of thought in wrestling that, it is wrestling, right? So w- when we get inside those four uh, uh, ropes, we've got to know what we're doing to entertain that crowd. I, I come from a blue collar family and I know how hard it is for a family of four to say, come on, spend a couple hundred bucks uh, to take the family out there and you know, buy a couple t-shirts or whatever, that it doesn't matter. We don't have the, uh, the, the luxury of saying, well, hey, I'm sick tonight, I got the flu, or, you know, my knee's bad, so i got to take it easy tonight. Uh, because those fans that spent their money to bring the family, it doesn't matter to them. They want to see a good performance. They want to entertain the family. And that's a big chunk out of the family budget. So, uh, you know, I, 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 Bill Watts used to always have this saying that once you walk in the building, you're on the clock. And, uh, and I firmly believe that. Like, you know, we, we it, it somehow became as, hey, see the girl up in the third row, and, hey, there's somebody smoking pot over here and somebody doing this over here. And I'm, I'm, my match isn't for another hour, so I'm off the clock. Well, no, you're on the clock from the beginning. Uh, and, and that got abrasive at times with Bill. But, you know, I, I always say, like, you know, people hear me say these, uh, they tell these stories about Bill, and, and I don't mean them to come across negatively because I learned my craft starting with Bill. And I don't think it's happenstance that when you look at the long, endless list of people that came through Mid-South and UWF, name one that didn't learn their craft, that wasn't very, very good at their craft. And I think I started with Bill. Uh, so, yeah. Did you, did you happen to be at the, uh, was it a Christmas party at Diamond Dallas Page's house when Van Hammer and William Regal <laughs> met up? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I've, I've heard there were a lot of these types of house parties that were going on then. That I was never privy to, but uh, no, I didn't hear the story. Oh, Larry Zbysko told me that uh, Regal just walked up to Van Hammer and just headbutted him unconscious. Didn't even say anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, that, yeah, w- wouldn't surprise me, right? I, the, 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 the closest I could think of coming to that was uh, we were staying at the Ramada in uh, uh, College Park, south of the Atlanta airport. And uh, the, play, the bar is packed, right? It's after the show. And Pillman had some kind of an issue with Sid and uh, uh, you know, they, we had to keep breaking them up and pulling them apart. And so they never really got into it, but Sid left and went out to his car and he came back in with a window squeegee. And like, we're all looking like, like we all started laughing. Like, is this for real? Like, is he going to fight Brian with a window squeegee? It was uh, you know, just, again, the crazy things that you, that you see as a wrestler, right? Forget, <laughs> forget about what I was going to ask. I have heard that story before. What built up, what was it about Pillman and Sid? Was it Sid in the WWF at the time? And it was like a meeting of WWF, WCW guys in the same bar. No, no. So it was WCW at the time. Uh, that's, that's where the WCW guys had the most of them hung out after the shows. Uh, to be honest, I can't remember. I, I do know that, uh, you know, Brian, because he was a smaller, you know, his, you know, his life story, right? Born with throat cancer. And, you know, it was always the smaller guy having to prove himself that Brian would throw down on a second if somebody was like screwing with him or whatever, because he felt like if I don't, they're going to just keep coming and keep getting worse. Uh, I'm sure it probably was some comment or series of comments and things that happened. I can't remember specifically, but my guess would be it was instigated by Sid and (laughs) got got Brian to the point of, uh, you know, of of, of getting ready to go and he would have gone. (laughs) Uh, what, What happened after the squeegee? Was it used? Did they just sort of just no, walk no, off no, afterwards? No, no, no. Never went after. I, I, as I remember, the whole bar started laughing. Like, like this is like so surreal, right? Like you're gonna, you know, you can't get the crowbar or something. You're gonna go to the car, right? Get, get a good weapon. It's, 